What is up, everybody? I am Ant, your current and longest reigning WWE pay-per-view champion of all time. And um, here, let me make sure this is not bad. I'm here just to tell everybody that I will be gladly defending my championship, my title, the best. I'm the hot commodity, by the way. I'm going to be defending this title at the Royal Rumble against this man and maybe a couple of other opponents. We'll find out. But here it is yourself, sir. My name is Chris Morales, the co-host of the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. Um, here to talk about Monday Night Raw. Um, here to announce I will be challenging uh for the for the pay-per-view title coming up at the Rumble. Um, you know, this is, this is my first title shot uh here here, so I think I'm gonna win. I, I'm very very confident. Um I, I think the only thing I, I can get wrong is maybe the Rumble winners, but when the matches, I, I, I don't know. I, I think, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm confident. I'm confident. Well, but let, let's talk about some, let's talk about Raw, but first. Here's, here's what I want to do. This is live. This is here. I'm throwing down an actual challenge to you, sir. And I have someone. Come on in, sir, if you want. Hi. How are you? We are we are recording. <laughs> oh my god, it's so weird. But you can come back. That yeah. Hi everybody. That's Aaron. He comes and like pops into the room sometimes. Very fun. You can come back. Okay. I don't know. What I don't happened. think he will. <laughs> well, we're we're recording it, and this is gonna go live on YouTube yeah, and Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And say hello to everybody. Hi YouTube. Come on in. No. He's leaving. Go. Okay, well, bye. Okay, so that I, I'm good. So I'm throwing out a challenge to you, sir. What's that no challenge? Cover Raw is 30. I'm challenging you to a promo battle. Give me all you got. A, our last big promo before the Royal Rumble. Mm, I will. I am going to annihilate you with my verbology and my doctor of Duganomic skills. You are going to be down on the ground. One, two, three. When it's all said and done, do you accept my challenge, or are you just going to walk away? The last time I I, I proposed a challenge to you, I fully accept your challenge. All right. Well, then that's what you guys have to look forward to next week when we cover Raw is thirty. Me and Christian, you get to see Christian get creamed in this uh battle of wits and determination in our first ever. Royal Rumble promo battle. I'm excited for that, Christian. I mean, listen, you stand a chance. You're pretty smart. But like you said earlier, let's talk about what everyone came to see. WWE Monday Night Raw from January 16th, 2023. Live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Boo! Fuck Cincinnati! Fuck Cincinnati, fuck the football team, and fuck your city. Go Steelers and go Pittsburgh. Did they beat them or something? No, we're uh we're division rivals. Oh, okay. Well, we're rivals. I if there's three cities, I can say fuck you, fuck you, Cleveland, fuck you, Baltimore, and fuck you, shit to natty. Well, I, I'm gonna represent the people of Cincinnati and say that's not very kind, sir. However, uh, you know, go cowboys. Oh represent my lord, I can't believe you just fucking said that. Tyler would uh, like you. Well, Tyler, my grandma, and listen, we're representing the Cowboys in this this division here, sir. But yeah. anyway, this is WWE. So we start off Monday Night Raw with the Usos and Solo Sokoa. And Jay says, um, at the Royal Rumble, Kevin Owens, you're going to get beat by Roman Reigns. And at Raw's 30, every generation of the bloodline will be there for an acknowledgement ceremony. Hold the breaks there. Supposedly, we're not going to get that this week on Raw. We're supposed, supposedly going to get the trial of Sami Zayn. Um, interesting concept. We'll talk more about that when we cover a Friday Night SmackDown from this past week on Friday. But the Judgment Day come out to the ring. And Rhea Ripley says, the only thing the bloodline needs to acknowledge is that the Judgment Day runs this show. And then Balor says, thankfully, the ex-con Dominic stepped up for his brothers and won the gauntlet match. Damian Priest says, next week, those Raw Tag Team titles are going to permanently be, permanently be back on Monday nights. You've never stepped to the Judgment Day. And then Dominic says, you're scared of us. Lucy says, the New Day, RK Bro, Street Profits, Los Lotharios, 
we beat you, them, and we beat you and your daddy, Dominic, to hold on to these titles, to gain these titles. And at Raw is 30, the Judgment Day, welcome to the Uso Penitentiary. And then Dominic says, you went and last a minute in a cell with the prisoners I was with. And the pen, we call the Usos wannabe essays. That street champ back there is the biggest wannabe talking about Solo. Solo gets in Dominic's face until Rhea Ripley gets in Solo's. Dominic nails Solo, the bloodline in Judgment Day brawl, until Mustafa Ali jumps on top of Solo before he can hit Rhea with a Samoan spike. Um... So let's let's talk it down there. Uh, Judgment Day and uh, the Usos. Which team do you think has more momentum going into Raw as 30? Both of them had a lot of good things to say. Well, my microphone's going down. Not great. What's happening? There we go. Thanks. Go ahead, sir. I think the Bloodline has more of the momentum going into uh, Raw as 30 um, because I think we'll see some of – uh, their family members there. I think we'll see Rikishi, which is the Usos' dad. Um, I think we'll see Alf, like Sinka, and all of them, which is. But Roman's... they're not doing the acknowledgement ceremony anymore, though. Oh, they're not. No. Or, they cut that. Uh, yeah. Hang on one second, brother. They supposedly they're doing a um, a trial of Sami Zayn. Oh, um, okay then. Well, that kind of just fucked up what I was going to say. Um, but I, I still think the bloodline has more of the advantage going in. Um, I think, I think the judgment, I don't know. The judgment day could beat the Usos going in for the raw titles because again, I think they're trying to split the titles off the Usos. So maybe this is, maybe this could be an upset, but if not, I, 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 I don't think. Uh, they will. I think they'll defend both the titles at Mania, uh, the Usos. So I, I, I don't, I don't think they're gonna. Judgment Day is gonna get the win, uh, at Raw is thirty. I, I think Usos are gonna come. I up. do like the fact that it's two like heel teams going at each other. It's different, and uh, I don't know what team is gonna win. I'm excited for it. A lot to look forward to there. Um, but let's cover our first match: Mustafa Ali versus Solo Sokoa. Solo nails a Samoan drop and gets a two. Solo nails a running hip attack in the corner. Um, Solo hits a clothesline but misses a hip attack. But Solo is able to toss Ali into the post, landing outside. The Usos get on the apron and Kevin Owens comes out. Kevin fights with the Usos. Ali nails a really cool tornado DDT and gets a two. Ali misses the 450 splash and gets hit with a Samoan spike. And Solo gets the victory after the match, though. Kevin Owens nails a stunner on Solo. The Usos try to attack, but KO tosses a chair in the Usos' face and stands on top of the table as the Bloodline leaves. Has the Bloodline met their match with Kevin Owens? He outsmarted them tonight, getting payback from their attack on him last Friday on SmackDown. What do you think, man? Is Kevin Owens, what do you think of the match and uh, Kevin Owens being able to send all, pretty much all the Bloodline packing? What do you think? It was just another solid. It was another solid match with again, Solo being dominant as usual. Um, I like to see Solo have more of a better component than Mustafa Ali. Not saying Mustafa Ali isn't a good wrestler, but we we just know that he 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 just, he just doesn't win matches. Um, but uh, I mean Ali, he almost got the win with that tornado DDT. But I I don't think anyone's surprised here that 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 Solo got the win. Um, but it's good fire by Kevin Owens um, after the match. Um, you know, he's continued to keep going after the bloodline. Um, he was laid out on SmackDown, so it's important to have him come back and get his revenge. Um, I, I'm, I'm still sticking with my gut here, and I definitely think uh, him. we'll see him and Owens teaming up. Or, uh, excuse me, him and Zayn teaming up at, uh, at Mania. Listen, man, I'm excited for all this shit to go down. Uh, I feel like something's going to happen on Raw as 30, and we'll get there as we continue going. But we see Bobby Lashley backstage, and Lashley says, there's only one almighty Austin Theory. Your title reign has an expiration date Expiration date at Raw as 30, and I'm going to put it away, for put you away for good. Um, can't really talk much here. It's just a promo from Lashley. Um, we then get a Cody Rhodes promo. 
and he finally reveals that he will be returning inside the 30-man Royal Rumble match. Oh, hi, sir. Thank you again. He likes to make appearances. He, he pretends he's camera shy, but I think he's actually the star of the show here. That was Ant again leaving me with some gum. Which, you know, this since this is the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast, I might as well just sort of break the fourth wall here and discuss something. I'm a big gum person, and this is Big League Chew, the um, bubble gum brand. Do you ever have this, sir? Of course. I played baseball. Hell yeah. I like the sour apple and the grape. Um, but anyways, what do you think about Cody Rhodes announcing that he's going to be involved in the Royal Rumble match this year? Do you think it should have been a surprise? Uh, sources are saying that they have bigger surprises for the Rumble match, so they were okay with um, Rhodes revealing it. But what do you think? I mean, I, I, I'm kind of stuck between that because – I do. Th- I don't think they should have announced it. Obviously, keep it a surprise. Um, but w- at the same time, we knew it was going to happen. We expect it to happen. That that to me is just uh, something that is just too obvious for them to maybe to keep a secret. So maybe just by it, maybe it just wouldn't have been like a surprise. I don't know. Um, but I another. But uh, the re- another reason why like I'm kind of on it is because I think these promos of him. Um, coming back telling the story of his surgery and his you know his recovery i i think it it sets him it it it, it really you know gets us to really want him to get to watch him in the rumble and i think he's a fucking favorite to win it if i'm being honest um but again with with if they're gonna announce cody rhodes coming to the rumble they they sure as fucking hell better have some good surprises coming for us i, know. I hope so i hope so too well Speaking of surprise surprises, Elias is backstage and he says it's been rough, but it's time to right some wrongs. However, MVP shows up and says, you can fight someone who will win the Royal Rumble match and you'll find out later on tonight. So big surprise there. We'll keep on moving. We have next Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander teaming up again to take on the Street Profits. Benjamin takes out Ford off the apron. Um, Benjamin nails Dawkins with Germans and gets a two count. Cedric nails a slam to Ford on the apron, and then MVP walks out to the ring. Um, Ford hits a frog splash to Shelton, um, but Cedric breaks it up. Benjamin tosses Ford hard to the mat from the top and gets a two. Um, each man dives onto one another outside, and the ending comes when MVP gets on the apron and Dawkins rolls up Cedric Alexander. And the Street Profits get the win. Now, I have a question for you. Was MVP, was that on purpose? Was he trying to help the Street Profits? Or what is going on here? Because I have a feeling, my theory is we might get a whole new and improved Hurt business. So what do you think, sir? Is he going to help out the Street Profits tonight? I mean, I don't know. Who, if, if he does help the Street Profits, who, I don't know. I, I think, I don't know. No, I'm going to say no. And the reason I'm going to say no is because for some reason, I think Montez is going to turn on Angelo. So I think they're going to do something completely different. I think we'll just see MVP with like Benjamin, Lashley, Cedric. But I, I if you notice... Uh, during the Street Profits' match sometimes, we definitely, you see Montez give us hints, like, taking forever to get tagged in in the matches. I don't know. Like, something's giving me a vibe that Montez will turn on Angela. Maybe maybe Montez will go work for MVP, you know? and I don't know what they do with Angelo, though, because I've said this before. He's nothing without Montez, in my opinion. Maybe so they'll give him, like, another partner or a new division. But I will say this was a good tag match, though, between these two teams. And uh, I was just confused with the ending because I don't understand who MVP is trying to work for because he just screwed over his team if he's working with Cedric and Shelton. But let's move on. Becky Lynch comes out, and I freaked out because I'm a big Becky Lynch fan, as everybody should know. She held my hand. She held my hand. So 
little jealous of you, bitch. But I'm happy that I get to know you and get to say that my friend held Becky Lynch's hand. That gives me enough pleasure, so that's cool. Um, so Becky says, I got business to take care of. Bailey, you get out out here, you dope. And then damage control walks out. Bailey says, I beat you so badly last week, you forgot who I was. My name is Bailey, not Karen, because Becky was calling her Karen. Um the Becky says, No, you're you you're a Karen. You're an idiot with a crappy haircut. Bailey says, real mature. This is a bitter reaction that you lost to me and you still have no friends. Becky says, you're mad because you peaked in 2015. Bailey says, you mean the year I ran NXT and you ran off with the other horsewomen and took my spot? Becky says, oh, you're try so you're trying to recreate with a faction. Bailey says, everything you have should have been mine. And Be Becky says, the point you're missing is you were kept in NXT because you wanted to be a leader and help the future. Or you are full of crap like I always said you were. I wasn't supposed to be the man. I was the first woman to win the main event at WrestleMania. I work harder than anyone else. I know you want this, but all you gotta do is but all you do is whine. And then Bailey says, You guys know nothing about who Becky is. You became the man because you got punched by somebody. And then Becky says, well, how about I punch you and make you relevant? She goes, how about you face me in a steel cage match next week? And then Bailey looks a little nervous, but she says, no problem. And Becky says, I'll see you next week. So we get a very heated promo. We get answers. We find out Bailey is mad that Becky Lynch pretty much took her spotlight. Bailey thinks that she should have been brought up first. She should have been with the four horsewomen not Becky. And Becky had some choice words, you know, I'll punch you in the face and make you relevant. You know, you peaked in 2015. Um, steel cage match set for next, steel cage match set, set for next week. I can't talk tonight. Um, I'm super excited after this promo. Who do you think stood more tall in this promo, Bailey or Becky? What do you think? I think Becky stood more tall in this promo. Um, I, I just think her mic skills all together or 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 just phenomenal as the same with Bailey. Um I again I just I just kind of feel like Becky threw a little more shots and a, a little more I feel like she got a little more of a pop uh than Bailey. But big match for uh next week. Um I'm excited. For those uh if you guys are listening, I, I, I may or may not be there tomorrow night. I, I a buddy of mine has an extra ticket. I'm still kind of thinking about it. Um but um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. Um, we don't see women's steel cage matches at all. Um, but this rivalry has, this is one rivalry that has actually been built pretty yeah. decent, pretty good actually. So I don't know. Um, Becky Lynch did become, you know, she became popular, right? A popular baby face as soon as she came back. Um, so I'm excited for this match again. We don't see women's steel cage matches, so. We'll see how this goes. Dude, I'm so excited. Steel cage between these two ladies next week. Uh, we talk about this in the amount of time that we have. MVP comes out as Elias is in the ring, and MVP says, I know things haven't gone well for you, but it's going to get a lot worse. And then Omos comes out, which Omos is a big dude, but again, he's boring. Omos headbutts, headbutts Elias onto the announce table and breaks Elias' guitar. Elias nails a high knee. But the end comes and Omos nails a double arm choke slam and gets a three count victory. Uh, Omos kind of sucks. What do you think? Just, you know, he's in the Royal Rumble match. He's boring. Easy win. Elias didn't do anything. Next. I don't like Omos. He's very boring. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't do shit and he's so big for nothing. Yeah, he's he's just. He barely kid. speaks English. Like, no disrespect, but you just can't do much with him. He barely speaks English. Very nice, sir. Um, okay. Moving on, Adam Pierce is backstage, and he basically says, I promise Raw is 30 will be unforgettable. And Akira Tozawa shows up and says he wants to be in the Royal Rumble match, and Adam Pierce tells him, fine, but you have to win a match to get involved. So we'll see that match later. Um, next, we have the Alpha Academy taking on the Judgment Day with Rhea Ripley and Finn Balor. Priest tosses Chad Gable to the outside. Gable applies an armbar over the ropes to Dominic. 
but Priest attacks Jake Gable from behind. Priest nails a Falcon Arrow and gets a two. Gable hits a flying headbutt to Priest. Uh, Damian Priest nails a kick and Ois drops Priest. Gable nails a suplex to Dominic outside of the ring. Um, Priest hits a south of heaven to, o to Otis off the top rope. And the end comes after Gable applies an ankle lock to Dominic. But Priest hits a south of heaven and Dominic gets the pin. So Judgment Day looking good right before their tag team title match next week on Raw is 30. What did you think of the Judgment Day? And is this is Alpha Academy now officially baby faces? What's going on here? I think Judgment Day, um, well, probably because they just fought a heel team in Judgment Day. But pretty good match between the Judgment Day. Um, I think this is, you know, they're getting a tag team title shot at the 30th anniversary. So it, it's giving them the momentum. Um, man, I think Alpha Academy are faces now, I guess. They're getting cheered a lot. Um, Otis gets, you know, a hot pop when he gets tagged into the ring. And, you know, I'm not too mad about it. Um, Gables, like I've mentioned before, he's a really good wrestler who just continues to lose his all the time. Um, and, and, he, and he's the smallest guy, probably one of the smallest dudes on the roster. Um, and he usually is the one getting pinned in their matches. So um, I, I hope, you know, they, they treat the Alpha Academy a little bit good here uh, coming up in 2023. But... I think the Judgment Day, they're, they're getting good momentum. I think Priest is dominant. Um, my question is, are, is it going to be Damien and Dominic, or is it going to da be Damien and Finn? It's a Damien and Dominic. It's Damien and Dominic. Okay, then. I, we'll see. We'll see, man. We'll see. But I, I, I think their momentum going uh, and their confidence going into the match uh, next week, well, tomorrow as we're recording, is I think it's going to be good. And like I said, they, they have a real legit fucking chance of winning it. So I'm excited. Well, we have a couple more minutes, so we'll cover this quick, and then we'll talk about our thoughts when we come back. We get a Martin Luther King Jr. promo. Obviously, it's MLK Jr. Day in the States. And we get one half of the women's tag team champions, Io Sky with Dakota Kai, taking on Mia Yim, who has Candice LeRae by her side. Io nails a flying dropkick and running knees in the corner. Um, Candice takes out Dakota Kai. However, Mia Yim hits Eo Sky with eight defeat and gets a three count. And after the match, Candice takes out Dakota Kai. So, Mia Yim and Candice LeRae, could they be contenders for the women's tag team titles? I mean, listen, these two are former NXT women's, you know, wrestlers. They were, you know, they seem to be the only people to outsmart damage control lately. What do you think? I don't know. Um... First, the mat. This match was just okay. Yeah. Um. I didn't. I didn't think this match was any any anything. The crowd was barely into it. Um. Stupid booking, lazy booking, in my opinion. Um. But yeah. Um. You know, this definitely sets up. It probably will set up a women's tag team title match soon. Um. I I definitely think Yim and Larey, uh, have have chances of winning. Um. And, you know, they they just don't do the women's tag team titles often. They don't. So. Um, I think now they're building uh Larey and Mia Yim as like challengers, so which is cool, cause all four of them could put on a really good ma uh match. All four of them have good have had good matches with each other or against each other in the NXT days. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Um, hopefully we do get it. Um, um, because we don't get it often, and and if they're gonna do it. How about them do it, not just a normal tag team title match, nor uh something something cool. Maybe like a no DQ, I hear you. Brother. Something like that, yeah, because they, they can do it. They, they've done it before. These four group of women can do it, but yeah. Well, we're going to kill it when we come back. We got the Raw Women's title to talk about, the WWE United States, number, the United States Championship number one contenders match, and a lot more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello. My name is Tyler Peters, and I've got a real quick message talking about the Uncensored Wrestling Podcast and its special program called The Attitude Years. You can find that on Anchor, Spotify, Amazon, and Google Podcasts, wherever you can find your listening platforms. But join the Italian Stallion, the host, Ant, and myself, Tyler Peters, his co-host from Parts Unknown, somewhere where it's none of your business, Tennessee. You like how I did that? 
But you want to relive those classic memories, those rivalries. Remember Stone Cold Steve Austin? Uh, you can just hear McMahon now. Don't you dare do it, Stone Cold. Don't you dare, or you're going to be your, your. You know, and then Stone Cold gets stunning. You know, you can just hear that gravitas in McMahon's voice. Maybe the three faces of Foley. You could see Cactus Jack. Maybe Dude Love, get down in the 70s, get your groove on. Or Mankind, very sadistic individual. Or is Kane and the Undertaker relive the brotherhood of the storyline that shocked us all when Paul Bear revealed he was the father of Kane? I'm his father, McMahon. And then we were all amazed at Bear's involvement. That dastardly man. He was so good, by the way. Or Val Venus, hello, ladies. Maybe you got distracted by watching Sonny and Sable and Jacqueline just as much as everybody else did, including myself. I'm not innocent in that regard. However, what about Chainsaw Charlie, Terry Funk, the legend, reinventing himself? I wouldn't advise that bump there, kid. When talking about Foley, my name is Chainsaw Charlie, and I left my horses back in Amarillo on the ranch. McMahon, I've got to leave. I'll be back here in a couple months or maybe years, but I will still do the moonsault off the top rope because I am Terry fucking. You're nothing more than an egg-sucking dog. You can just hear it and relive those classic memories. I love it. You know, so many just crazy characters and it was a crazy time in the industry but define the attitude years presented by the uncensored wrestling podcast and go to anchor amazon spotify and google podcasts like i aforementioned wherever you can find the listening platforms for your podcast also there's video versions go like follow and subscribe on youtube and watch those right now there's also the library where you can revisit episodes but there's going to be a lot of new episodes meaning new content to be released shortly. That's the Uncensored Wrestling Podcast presents The Attitude Years with Ant and myself, Tyler Peters. Go check it out right now. All right. Welcome back. Yes, that's my friend, my co-host, my tag team partner, but at the Royal Rumble, man, partners brothers it, it, it doesn't matter you know it's every man for themselves and this title means the world to me so that's all gonna end but you know everyone should know who you are but if they don't just introduce yourself again my name is christian ross co-host of the uncensored processing podcast and let's continue to talk about monday night raw here and you're the host of the aew all elite uncensored recaps which i love yes sir do you got a couple of good ones point out we have a double episode for you guys uh, we are have the episode from the week prior and this past week's episode of Dynamite coming to you live. We also have our very special WWE Royal Rumble 2023 prediction episode dropping Saturday, January 28th. Make your predictions alongside with us. Find out who will walk out the WWE pay-per-view champion. That will be me. And uh, just, you know, it's going to be a great show. So speaking of great shows, we're going to continue talking about Monday Night Raw. And how can you talk about Raw? Without discussing the WWE Raw Women's Champion, the EST, Bianca Belair. And Bianca comes out and says, I have missed y'all so much. I would still fight Alexa Bliss again and again because risk brings rewards. Um, being And that happens by being your WWE Raw Women's Champion. Alexa, I heard what you had to say. Do you have the guts to come out and say it to my face? So then Alexa Bliss walks out. And Bliss says, you fear me because you don't know what to expect from me. Bianca says, do you want to try to beat 29 women for a title opportunity? Or do you want to fight me at the Royal Rumble? Bliss says, well, what's the catch? Bianca says, the choice is you, yours. You want to control. And Bliss says, I'll see you at the Rumble. And Bianca says, and you can see me tonight. And then Bliss and Bianca brawl outside of the ring. Bianca bounces Bliss's head off the ring apron. Bliss accidentally falls into the crowd. Uh, Bianca then stands up behind Bliss. They fight again into the crowd. Bianca goes for a KOD onto chairs, but we see a figure, which is Uncle Howdy. He comes in from, like, I guess you could say, like, an exit door. 
and he appears, and that throws Bianca Belair off, and Bliss nails a DDT on the concrete, and Alexa Bliss walks off. Alexa Bliss definitely has the mind games and the advantage. It does seem we're going to see Bliss versus Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's title at the Royal Rumble. What do you think of this segment? Do you Who do you think... Uh, what do you think of Uncle Howdy and Bliss? And what do you think of Bianca Belair? What's going on? Um, again, we're seeing Uncle Howdy. Um, I mentioned before that the storyline really doesn't go anywhere because we don't see um, nor Howdy nor Wyatt mention anything about Alexa. But um, now we're finally starting to see get somewhere with this. Um, you know, I don't know if they're on the same page um, or not. Uh my prediction is maybe he helps her win the world title at uh, the Rumble against Belair. Um, it it kind of does add a what if uh, to the match for sure. Um, I think Belair can overcome this. Um, I just, like you said, I think the mind games are, are playing a toll on her right now. And I think Alexa has a little bit of the advantage here. Um, but I could also see if they could hold, if they hold that title uh, until WrestleMania and then maybe, you know, maybe they, they, Alexa wins the Rumble, or maybe someone wins the Rumble and challenges Charlotte, and then they just book that match. I don't know. Yeah, I see. I feel like Alexa has a bigger picture to play in the Bray Wyatt feud at WrestleMania, but I also could see uh, Alexa being involved in the title picture at Mania. I don't know. There's a lot, a lot to speculate, but with the whole, like you said, with Uncle Howdy being in the picture, my messy room, I'm trying to hide it. It's okay. I don't care where it's insert. Um, there's a lot to uh, look forward to this Saturday at the Royal Rumble. Speaking of this Saturday at the Royal Rumble, we have our second, well, yeah, our second qualifying match of the night. Akira Tozawa taking on Bronson Reed. Tozawa stood no chance. Bronson Reed annihilated him and nailed the tsunami. How is anyone going to eliminate Bronson Reed, my man? They're going to all have to team up against him. What do you think? Bronson Reed, he's big. Um, I, I definitely think this is an easy win for him crowd goes quiet for all of it <laughs> um i thought this was just going to be like a two second match where he just beats the shit out of tozawa um i don't but the, the thing is we've seen tozawa pop up on tv uh recently like more than we've seen him so i definitely think he sneaks a spot in the rumble um but again uh this match was a little longer than i expected it to be um i don't know i'm not a huge i'm not crazy over bronson reed to be honest, I don't really care. Don't give a shit about him. So. Well, let's talk about next week. WWE Raw is 30. We have, we've already talked about this earlier, the WWE Raw tag team titles on the line. The champions, the Usos, defending against the Judgment Day. We have, which now has been confirmed uh, based on Friday Night SmackDown, the trial of Sami Zayn, a bunch of WWE legends, including The Undertaker, The Nature Boy, Ric Flair, the immortal Hulk Hogan, the Bella Twins, IRS. Bella Twins. You said so, legends. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I saw a Lunder Blaze Medusa on the list. So many people. Um, we also have the special steel cage match between Becky Lynch and Bailey, and the WWE United States title will be on the line. Austin Theory defending his title against the winner of this six man gauntlet well, elimination match. Your competitors are Finn Balor, The Miz, Dolph Ziggler, Bobby Lashley, Seth Rollins, and Baron Corbin with JBL. Before the match can start, the United States champion Austin Theory comes out to join commentary. Here are some notes on this match. Rollins nails an integrated Balor. Ziggler nails a DDT off the railing and gets a two count on The Miz. Lashley nails a Tower of Doom, but he misses a spear in the corner. Ziggler hits a famous sir to Lashley. Miz takes out Ziggler with a skull crushing finale and gets a two count on Bobby Lashley. Miz with the Miz kicks to Finn Balor in the ring. Um, however, Miz applies a figure four on Ziggler, but Ziggler reverses it and Rollins nails a stomp to the Miz and the Miz is the first man eliminated from this match. Balor and Lash and... Um, who is this? And Baron Corbin run Bobby Lashley into the ring post. Rollins with clotheslines to Balor, and he dives onto Balor outside of the ring. 
Rollins then proceeds to spit water in the face of Austin Theory. Rollins dives onto Lashley and Corbin outside. Balor takes out all three men with a dive. And then Ziggler jumps off the top rope onto all the men outside. Ziggler nails a super kick and a zigzag to Lashley. Rollins hits a pedigree to Ziggler, and Ziggler is then eliminated. Corbin hits Balor with a deep six and gets a two count. And then Lashley takes out both Rollins and Balor. Lashley nails a flat liner on Rollins and gets a two. Omos then walks out with MVP, and Corbin takes out Lashley. Balor nails a shotgun drop kick to Lashley. A coup de grace. But then Rollins comes in again with a sneak attack and nails a stomp on Balor. And Balor is then eliminated. Um, Rollins super kicks Corbin. But Omos sends Rollins over the announce table. And Lashley spares Corbin. And Baron Corbin is eliminated. It is now down to Bobby Lashley and Seth Rollins. Austin Theory nails Bobby Lashley with the United States Championship. Omos grabs Theory by the throat. However, Rollins stops Omos and attacks Theory. Rollins nails a super kick to MVP, and then Lashley spears Rollins, and Bobby Lashley is going to be going to Raw is 30 to challenge the WWE United States champion, Austin Theory. What a crazy match, a lot of action. Um, who do you think was the MVP of that match, and uh, were you happy that Lashley got the win? I can't hear you, sir. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, I'll record your okay. okay. Um so I definitely think Seth Rollins should have won the match. Um I definitely would have liked to seen Theory and Rollins go at it at Mania or something. I or not Mania, but you know, maybe I don't know, maybe not because I don't want Mania's so far away still, so, so I don't know. Um, I, I the only reason I think they're gonna give Lashley they gave Lashley the win here is because we could possibly see Lashley go heel heel with uh the heart business. Um, you know that, that that's one way on what I think they're gonna do uh do it. Uh, theory holding the title for a long time, I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, because you know there, there's rumors going around that he is uh going to fight Cena. At, WrestleMania, but I I don't know yeah. if that's true or not. I don't I don't think Cena's gonna come back for a match, and especially against Austin Theory. I just think that's just what really, I think that is just what people really want to see. But I don't I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, but I I wonder if Theory will have the U.S. title going into WrestleMania or going into that match if that match does happen. But I don't think he if that match happens he won't be having the United States Championship. Um, there's again there's still a long time a few months. But, before we get to WrestleMania. So I don't know as of right now, but if, if they do give Lashley a title, I can definitely, again, the reason being, you know, I think they're trying to go heel here with the harp or the hurt business, excuse me. Um, and then maybe give recruit some, some other people besides him and Omos and we'll see. But I, I think that we're, we're, we're seeing a heart business come back definitely with Lashley as the U S champion. Well, there's just so many what ifs what, that shit could happen, especially with WrestleMania season. So I just don't know. Great. I love when WrestleMania seasons like this when you're wondering what's going to happen next. So my next question for you is, what was your moment of the night as we wrap up this episode? My moment of the night, probably. Um, I'm gonna say the main event. Mm-hmm. I think it was different. Okay. Uh, we haven't seen a ma- a gauntlet match like that, type like match like that in a long time. Um, and I I think uh you know I think Lashley, I don't think he should have won, but I definitely think he he performed the best. So I think Lashley uh winning the match the gauntlet match was highlight of the night. There there wasn't anything crazy. I think this was like a six out of ten. Uh, Monday Night Raw. Um, I get it. They're trying to build up more stuff for. 30th anniversary, so that's why it probably wasn't as good. Well, yeah, I agree that there's a lot. The, the, next week is going to be so exciting. Dude, I'm excited. We got a lot of stuff. I might have a surprise uh, for the viewers, Nick, depending on like what I get done. I probably don't, but we'll see. 
I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Christian, thank you, of course, for being here. I uh, thank you, night, man, course. for having me, of course. Of course, brother. My moment I was talking to you, but also from Raw, uh, Becky Lynch and the Bailey promo, that was just, that gave me everything. That was awesome. Oh, that was a really good promo, too. That was sick. I was very excited about that. I'm excited for this week's episode of Raw. I'm excited for this week's coverage of AEW Dynamite. We got Friday Night SmackDown, Royal Rumble this Saturday. A lot coming our way. We got a new episode of the Odd Tier dropping Tuesday. Get excited for that. A lot of stuff coming your way. Thank you guys for tuning in. Stay safe, and we will talk to you all soon. Stay uncensored. Bye.